Twitter thread by Jack Dorsey from March 25th. Thank you members of the Energy and Commerce Committee and its subcommittees for the opportunity to speak with the American people about how Twitter may be used to spread disinformation and our solutions. My remarks will be brief so we can move to your questions and discussion. In our discussion today, some of you might bring up specific tweets or examples and I'll probably have an answer like, quote, my team will follow up with you, end quote. I don't think that is useful. I'd rather us focus on principles and approaches to address these problems. I'll start with ours. We believe in free expression. We believe in free debate and conversation to find the truth. At the same time, we must balance that with our desire for our service not to be used to sow confusion, division, or destruction. This makes the freedom to moderate content critical to us. Our process to moderate content is designed to consistently evolve. We observe what's happening on our service. We work to understand the ramifications, and we use that understanding to strengthen our operations. We push ourselves to improve based on the best information we have. Much of what we're likely to discuss today are entirely new situations the world has never experienced before, and in some unique cases involve elected officials. And we believe the best way to face a big new challenge is through narrowing the problem to have the greatest impact. Disinformation is a broad concept. We needed to focus our approach on where we saw the greatest risk, if we hope to have any impact. So we chose to focus on disinformation leading to offline harm and three categories to start. Manipulated media, public health, and civic integrity. Many of you will have strong opinions on how effective we are in this work. Some of you will say we're doing too much and removing free speech rights. Some of you will say we're not doing enough and end up causing more harm. Both points of view are reasonable and worth exploring. If we woke up tomorrow and decided to stop moderating content, we'd end up with a service very few people or advertisers would want to use. Ultimately, we run into business, and a business wants to grow the number of customers it serves. Enforcing policy is a business decision. Different businesses and services will have different policies, some more liberal than others, and we believe it's critical this variety continues to exist. Forcing every business to behave the same reduces innovation and individual choice and diminishes free marketplace ideals. If instead we woke up tomorrow and decided to ask the government to tell us what content to take down or leave up, we may end up with a service that couldn't be used to question the government. This is a reality in many countries today and is against the rights of an individual. This would also have the effect of putting enormous resource requirements on businesses and services, which will further entrench only those who are able to afford it. Smaller businesses would not be able to compete, and all activity would be centralized into very few businesses. So how do we resolve these two viewpoints? One way is to create shared protocols. Social media has proven itself to be important enough to be worthy of an internet protocol. One that a company like Twitter can contribute to and compete on creating experiences people love to use. We've started work on such a standard, which we call Blue Sky. It intends to act as a decentralized open source social media protocol, not owned by any single company or organization. Any developer around the world can help develop it, just as any company can access its services. How does an open protocol address the concerns raised here? Greater transparency is the strongest benefit. Anyone around the world can see everything that's happening in the network, including exactly how it works. One doesn't have to trust a company, just look at the source code. Second, since the base protocol is shared, it will increase innovation around business models, recommendation algorithms, and moderation controls, which are in the hands of individuals rather than private companies. This will allow people to experiment in a market-based approach. Finally, it will allow all of us to observe, acknowledge, and address any societal issues that arise much faster. Having more eyes on the problems will lead to more impactful solutions that can be built directly into the protocol, making the network far more secure and resilient. A decentralized open source protocol for social media is our vision and work for the long term. We continue the cycle mentioned earlier of constantly improving our approach to content moderation in the short term. I hope our discussion today will focus on more enduring solutions. One final note, 
We're all a bunch of humans with a desire to make the world around us better for everyone living today and those that come after us. We make mistakes in prioritization and execution. We commit to being open about these and doing our best to remedy what we control. We appreciate the enormous privilege we have in building technologies to host some of the most important conversations in the world. And we honor the desire to create better outcomes for everyone who interacts with them. Thanks for your time, and I look forward to the discussion.